Hello and welcome to Ace Designs 107. I am the ace in the card pack and you're the kings and queens. I welcome you upon this tutorial which we'll be doing in Cinema 4D today. It's going to consist of us making a 3D text effect in Cinema 4D and then adding some touches to it in Photoshop. This tutorial won't be long hopefully and it will be able to redo without any struggle. So let's get straight into the tutorial. But before I do that guys, I need to say something. I do apologize for not uploading in the past two weeks. I just had my exam blocks for school and now I'm on holidays. Holidays means that I'll be able to upload a lot regularly, a lot more regularly and I will be able to make some really cool content for the future. So if you would like to see that content, please support me by liking the video. That will be greatly appreciated by myself. Thank you so, for so much that I've been getting for all the support on my channel, and I'll hope to see you later within the tutorial. Okay, so let's open up Cinema 4D. So this is what I made. Um, this is what our file will look like. But before we can get to this, we need to make a new document. So I'm going to press Control N on my document and I'm going to go down to the spline tool and pick up the text. For the text, I'm just going to type up tutorial and for the font, I'm going to make it any font. Um, you guys can use whatever font you would like. It doesn't really matter. However, what I do recommend is typing out the text in um, capitals, first of all, and you probably also want to add in um, like another font. So in my case, I'm going to try and use Typography Pro since that is my favorite type of font. Um, it, it's a really sleek font. So let me find this one. And forgive me if I feel a bit rough with commentating. Um, I just haven't done this in a long time. So yeah, um, I'm also going to change it to semi bold. Okay, so now we've got our font. Actually, tutorial is a long word. Um, you can do whatever one you want, but I'm just going to do crash. Okay. So basically, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this text by holding Alt on my keyboard and going to subdivision surface, holding down my click, hovering my mouth above extrude, and letting go of my mouse click. Okay, that will extrude the text. Now for the extrude, I'm going to go down to the caps and change the type to quadrants, and I'm also going to do a regular grid. Okay, now what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to go to the object, and I'm also going to change up the subdivision to around 3. Now, forgive me, I forgot what is my um, settings for this one. Let me go check. Won't take long. 3105. Okay, so we're going to go back to our window and for the caps, I'm also going to do the width 5. Okay, so now we can move on to the next step, which is applying the explosion effector to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab under bend the um, explosion effects by just holding down my click, hovering my mouse over, let go. And I'm going to group these effects with the text. As you can see, when I put the effects in, nothing happens. Even if I put the extrude under the effects as a child, nothing happens. What you need to do is you need to group these together. So hold shift, click on the extrude, right click, and then do group objects. Now what this will do is it's going to apply the effect of explosion. But before I do this, I'm going to rename the group to text slash explosion and I'm also going to click down here on the plus sign and I'm also going to go down to my extrude press enter and do text or font doesn't really matter okay so the next step of the tutorial is to edit some of the explosion effectors so what we're going to do with this is we're going to make sure that our move tool is selected while the explosion effector is selected and we're going to move it 
relatively in the middle of this. Now, as you can see, the explosion is pretty wild. We need to settle things down here and manipulate the um, settings to suit us. So under the explosion effects, we're going to go to gravity first, and we're going to make sure that all these values on zero. We don't want any gravity in the simulation. However, you can do whatever you would like. Okay. Okay, so now I've finished applying the effects, and what you can see is I've mixed it up a lot, but what I've tried to focus on is splitting up that A, because that A is that middle letter of our word, and it's going to add some really cool variation. So with this, I'm going to move up the effect uh, like this in the middle, see how if it's on the bottom only, it's only going to do, I want to do it all around like this, and that's going to really split up the A. So for my settings, I'm just going to turn down the um, strength a little bit, like that. So for my settings, what I have is I have the strength on 12, the decay on 100%, the variation 35, the direction on except Z, the variation on 0, the blast time on 1500. 1500 to 1511, the decay on 76, the variation on 0, the blast range 351, and the variation 0. Now for the object, I'm going to have it on 10 seconds, you can really mess this one up, um, it's really all up to you. So 10.6 for an example, the cluster, I'm not even going to touch that one, I'm just going to leave it at 6.1, variation 0, density thousand gravity make sure everything's on zero it doesn't matter what direction you are and everything else just leave it as it is so basically what we have now is if we have a really cool um, explosion effector now I made sure that I can resize my explosion effector by going to the scale tool and resizing it up and down by making sure my explosions are up and obviously that will make the explosion a different size than that um, but I just resized it to something I'm comfortable with Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some color to this and then we're going to add it into Photoshop. So I'm going to go to create new material and first I'm going to double click on my material, add a color. I'm going to do this one like a light greenish, like a light lime. And I'm going to drag this lime onto my text. Okay, that's our text done. Now I'm going to go to create new material again, double click on this, click on the color. And then I'm going to go with a green between like a bluish and a green so and it's going to be a darker green like this one press so close that one and then i'm going to go down to the cube hold my click down open up a plane i'm going to change the orientation of this plane to negative z and i'm going to resize it with the scale tool right up doesn't really matter how big just as long as it covers the whole screen and I'm going to move this one just behind my text. Like that. So I can use this and I can make sure that it's just behind it. Not much. Okay, sweet. You can also change the width of your text if you're not happy by that by going to the um, extruded. And you can change the movement. Well, not the movement. I think it's somewhere in here. No, it isn't. I uh, under text it must be. Hmm, <laughs> it isn't. Um, but yeah, so that's our text scene. It doesn't really matter. So now I'm gonna apply this dark material to my plane, and when I preview render that, 
we've got something pretty standard on here. I'm going to double click on my material again and just make this thing a little bit more darker to make my text stand out a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a light by clicking up there. I'm going to change the type from Omni to Area. I'm going to move this light backwards in the front, in the up, and then backwards. I'm going to also scale it up a little bit. Okay. And under the light, I'm going to change the shadow of it from none to sh um, shadow soft light. And we should have some shadows coming in. Now, if you take notice that if you have the plane um, not too close, you'll get a massive shadow. And it kind of ruins the picture in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is see, I'm just going to demonstrate this. Get a much more larger shadow. So um, just try to keep that plane as close as possible um, the reason for that is you'll get a less of a shadow see with this render we have a smaller shadow so I'm going to find a good angle what I like it at probably like this one okay so with this I'm going to go to the settings but before I do that I'm just going to find like this Okay, so under the red in settings, we're going to do the format from PSD layers to PNG. And I'm going to do a save path of a PNG text. Doesn't really matter. And I'm, you're going to turn on your anti aliasing to best for 8. And you can also turn in ambient occlusion, but that it's just a tutorial, it doesn't really matter for me how good it looks. So I'm going to go here and click render. And basically these renders look shit, but the purpose of this is we're going to fix it up in Photoshop anyway. Um, and this is not 1920, so I'm going to stop that quickly and go to my render settings, go to save output and go to 1920 for the width and the height 1080p. Okay, sweet. And now I can click render. Render that. Come on. Okay, so now we've got something really cool in here. Um, it's got all this pixel stuff in it, but that's because of I didn't turn on um, anti-analyzing as much. But that's fine, guys. So now what you're going to do is you're going to open up Photoshop and wait for that to finish rendering. And we're going to go open and just make sure that this render is finished opening. But while we're waiting for this to finish to render, I just want to say thank you for all the support on this channel. Um, you'll be seeing in this video, there's these little like editing things that I've done in post. Um, please hit the like button, you know, I put a lot of effort into this video. So yeah, um, another thing is like I recorded videos before this video, but I recorded three times actually, and every single time my software failed on me and I had to record the whole video and I got up to 80%, that's the worst bit. And it was a really advanced Illustrator tutorial, which I really hope that you guys would enjoy. And it was pretty annoying, but it's fine. Life's life, I guess. Let this render through. I'm not gonna pause the video, I'm not even gonna bother. Let's see how much time it is. Okay, it's finishing up here. Okay, so this is done. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to and open it up in Photoshop. And the first thing that we're going to do, and the only thing that we're going to do, is we're going to make a duplicate of this, hide our bottom one, and then go to filter, magic bullets, magic bullet looks. This is all we're really going to do, and these are all the presets that I used before, but I'm going to go through it with you. So, um, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to add in the curves by going to your subject, holding your mouse click over here, and click and drag into cur curves over here. And you're going to do for the RGB like a wavy point like this. These guys will see. I'll do it with you guys, but I don't want to like take off all these effects. So we're going to do like waves for all of the reds, for the greens and the blues. Just manipulate it on how you want the picture to look, you know. Just do whatever you like. So we're also going to go to the lens and we're going to add in a soft edged softness by 
and then we're gonna with the edge softness I'm gonna drag in like this one and I'm gonna blur out the black background okay so now with the color contrast um, you can do whatever one you want, whatever one you float to your boat. So I'm just going to drag my thing over here and see what I get. Kind of like that one. And for the color chromic abbreviation, you don't need this one, so you can just delete that. Um, sometimes I like to add it, sometimes I don't. It really depends on what mood I am in. So, you know. And you can turn up the contrast and you can do something really cool. But I'm just going to turn down my contrast for now and leave that for another tutorial. Um, I guess we'll delete that one. And for the colorista three way, you're going to add in a colorista and edit some of these settings. Midtone. I guess that green's pretty nice. Got something going on here and you're also going to add in a technical let change down the strengths really guys i can't really like show you how to do this um it's just all about on your personal taste you know whatever you like okay so with the film grain i can really teach you don't turn it up too much no one likes a massive amount of film grain it's there for the retro look so um do like the amount 0.1 one don't do a lot guys like you'll piss off a lot of people so don't do a lot um just do like 13 or something and for the cosmo um you don't really need to add this one i don't think it does much in this one okay but um i might try another thing so print bleach pass it's really just drag and drop and like edit the settings and see what it does like i don't know what they do individually like i can't say oh i want this one to do this effect i just try it and you know trial and error one okay so i think i've got like an effect what i like so i'm going to finish that on it's going to take a while to render this one out and what i'll do is i'll make like a magic bullets tutorial actually later on so um so instead of me doing every tutorial teaching you on how to use magic bullets and that i can just show you the settings what i used and then yeah so i'm gonna also sign it by ace designs whatever I'm just going to do a tutorial. But you would obviously sign your work so someone doesn't take it off the internet. Um, and I'm just going to put that in the corner. But obviously you would resize it like this. And you have something like this. You have an awesome wallpaper, guys. Um, you can also do whatever word you want. And you can also go back in Cinema 40 by any time and go to your text and change the text. You can also change the... Um, you know the explosion like text tutorial you can do whatever that's the awesome thing with this it's all editable even if you did a mistake before if you misspelled a word you can go back and edit it it's a great thing about this tutorial you can also do some other post effects but that's all i'm going to show you for today guys thank you so much for tuning into the tutorial i do hope that you did learn something and if you would like to learn more things in photoshop and other graphics design softwares Make sure you go check out my channel. We have a lot of useful content for all you guys that have YouTube channels. Help your channel look better for free. And I hope that you did enjoy this one. Peace and I'll see you in the next one. Please subscribe and like. Fala, eu não sei de